The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is the lead federal agency responsible for managing the nation's fish, wildlife, plants, and their habitats for the continuing benefit of the American people. Several agencies in the federal government put our country's conservation laws into action, and the service's Ecological Services Program helps lead the way. This presentation provides a brief overview about how the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service identifies and lists species under the Endangered Species Act. Every single species on Earth needs a specific set of environmental conditions to live and thrive. As the ecological footprint of humans grows, however, the habitat required by a variety of species is becoming increasingly unavailable. Subsequently, a number of species populations have become unstable to the point where their extinction is a real possibility. The Endangered Species Act of 1973, as amended, or ESA, is one of the most far-reaching wildlife conservation laws ever enacted by any nation. Congress, on behalf of the American people, passed the ESA to prevent extinctions facing many species of fish, wildlife, and plants. The purpose of the ESA is to conserve endangered and threatened species and the ecosystems on which they depend as key components of America's natural heritage. To implement the ESA, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service works in cooperation with the National Marine Fisheries Service, other federal, state, and local agencies, tribes, non-governmental organizations, and private citizens. Before a plant or animal species can receive the protection provided by the ESA, it must first be added to the federal lists of endangered and threatened wildlife and plants. The lists of endangered and threatened wildlife, 50 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, 17.11, and the list of endangered and threatened plants, 50 CFR 17.12, contain the names of all species and subspecies of animals and plants that have been determined by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or the National Marine Fisheries Service to be in the greatest need of federal protection. A species is added to the list when it is determined to be endangered or threatened because of any of the following factors. The present or threatened destruction, modification or curtailment of its habitat or range, overutilization for commercial, recreational, scientific or educational purposes, disease or predation, the inadequacy of existing regulatory mechanisms, or other natural or man-made factors affecting its survival. What do the terms endangered and threatened mean? A species is listed under one of two categories endangered or threatened, depending on its status and the degree of threat it faces. An endangered species is one that is currently in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its range. A threatened species is one that is likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future throughout all or a significant portion of its range. What are the criteria for deciding whether to add a species to the lists? The ESA gives no preference to popular species or so-called charismatic megafauna or higher life forms. Listing of a species is based solely on the five factors identified previously and on the basis of the best available scientific and commercial information. To help conserve genetic diversity, the ESA defines species broadly to include subspecies and for vertebrates, distinct populations. But how exactly does a species become listed under the ESA? It can happen two different ways, through the candidate assessment process or through the petition process. In the candidate assessment process, service biologists identify those species they consider to be candidates for listing and protection under the ESA, or the ESA allows any interested person to petition the Secretary of the Interior to add a species to or to remove a species from the list of endangered and threatened species. What steps are involved in listing a species? We follow a strict legal process known as a rulemaking or regulatory procedure. Federal agencies follow this process to propose and adopt regulations that have the effect of law and apply to all persons, organizations, and agencies under U.S. jurisdiction. As a first step in assessing the status of species, we publish notices of review that identify species that we believe meet the definition of threatened or endangered. We refer to these species as candidates for listing. Through notices of review, we seek biological information that will help us to complete the status reviews for these candidate species. We then publish notices in the Federal Register, a daily federal government publication. The full list of candidate species is available online at this address. 
This link is provided in the notes below this video. How do we decide which species to list? Because of the number of candidates and the time required to list a species, we have developed a priority system designed to direct our efforts towards the plants and animals in the greatest need. In our priority system, the degree or magnitude of threat is the highest criterion, followed by the immediacy of the threat and the taxonomic distinctiveness of the species, such as a monotypic genus, then species, then subspecies, variety, or vertebrate population. Beyond the need to conserve species already listed as endangered or threatened, we work with our partners to conserve candidate species in order to prevent the need for listing. Candidate conservation agreements are partnerships involving the service in states or U.S. territories, federal agencies, private agencies, and even you or your neighbor to reduce or remove the threats to species on the brink of listing. When we or the National Marine Fisheries Service decide that a species needs to be listed under the ESA, we publish a listing proposal in the Federal Register. We may publish multi-species proposals when several candidate species share a common ecosystem. To promote awareness of a proposal, we issue news releases, conduct special mailings, and inform the scientific community and other federal and state agencies. In addition, we publish a summary of any proposal as a legal notice in newspapers serving each area in which the species is believed to occur. We may hold public hearings in cases of high public interest, or if an interested party asks us to do so within 45 days of the public announcement of a proposal. Can you comment on a listing proposal? Yes. What do we do with comments and biological information? In our final rulemaking, we analyze information received in public comments and testimony. Within one year of a listing proposal, we may publish a listing rule as originally proposed or revise it to include additional biological data. Withdraw the proposal because the biological information does not support the listing, or, if necessary, extend the proposal if there is substantial disagreement within the scientific community concerning the biological appropriateness of the listing. After a six-month extension, we are required to make a decision on the basis of the best scientific information available. A final listing rule generally becomes effective 30 days after publication in the Federal Register. Can you nominate a species for listing? Although we initiate most listing proposals, the listing process can start with a petition to list a species from any member of the public. Petitions are formal requests to list a species. However, petitions need the support of solid biological data to be considered. We consider any information submitted on the biology, distribution, or threats to the species when making our decisions. How does the service respond to a petition? The ESA requires that we make and publish specific findings on a petition. We, or the National Marine Fisheries Service, are required to make a finding within 90 days of receiving a petition to the extent that it's practicable as to whether there is substantial information indicating that the petition action may be warranted. If this preliminary finding is positive, we conduct a status review. Within one year of receipt of the petition, we must make a finding whether the listing is warranted. A positive 12-month finding may be incorporated into a proposed rule to list a species. However, if a proposal to list a species is precluded by higher priority listing activities, we may defer the proposal. This is known as a finding of warranted but precluded. If this happens, the species becomes a candidate for listing and is added to our candidates list. These warranted but precluded findings require annual reviews until we either develop a proposal to list or make a not warranted finding. What does listing mean for a species? Once we add an animal or plant to the list, and remember there are separate lists for plants and animals, protective measures apply. These measures include protection from adverse effects of federal activities, restrictions on taking, transporting, or selling a species, authority to develop and carry out recovery plans, authority to purchase important habitat, and provide federal aid to state and commonwealth wildlife agencies that have cooperative agreements with us to support species conservation and recovery. These efforts contribute to species survival and assist in achieving the ultimate goals of the Endangered Species Act conserving plants and animals, and maintaining their natural diversity in the ecosystems upon which they depend. For the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, this is Dave Harrelson. Thanks for watching.